Hello, welcome back to Rational Investing. My name is Cameron Stewart, CFA. Thank you very much for watching the channel. I greatly appreciate all the support and comments. I uh, really, really can't say how much I, I, I appreciate the support and the feedback. Um, you know, crunch these numbers, doing the work at night, uh, you know, after coming from work and then reading the comments from you guys has been inspiring. I really appreciate it. Uh, so let's let's move forward. This channel is dedicated to the rational investor, the investor that's hunting through to pick out cash flow, which is the real uh, value of a business. Any business is valued on its future cash flows brought to present day, that's the value of the business. And what we do is we hunt for what that intrinsic value of a company is. And we then compare that intrinsic value to the current offering price, the selling price of the market. And if there's a delta between the intrinsic value and the current price, how big is that delta? And if it were to collapse, to, to realize, to join, what would our economic value be to us? That's what we look for. And we look for investments that have five key attributes. The first one would be top line revenue growth, earnings growth as we define by EBITDA, uh, free cash flow growth, a solid balance sheet, and a well-priced stock being the most important. Please reference the Domino's versus Google IPO for, for comment uh, or demonstration on that one. Today, I've got a good one for you. Home Depot. All right, everyone knows it. Lord knows I go there probably every weekend for some random house project that needs fixing, so they get a ton of my money. Uh, let's figure out if it's a good investment, what we should think the investment, uh, uh, the economic return might be, and if we should be buying the stock. Behind me is the 10K for 2019. Definitely go through and read it. Read all those 10Ks. It's very important. It gives you great understanding of the business. And if you're going to put your money to work in a company for a decade or more, read the reports. Right? How many investments should you have in your portfolio? Uh, you know, Five to 30 is fine. You could read 30 reports every year. Let's go take a look at the numbers. Behind me is roughly a decade of financials for, for Home Depot. We're going to pick up with revenue and we're going to take a look and see what they've done. So they started $70 billion in 2012. And in 2020, it's uh, $110 billion. Now, one caveat here, their fiscal year is January 31st. So they've already reported the, the 2020 timeframe is January 2020. So really, it represents the 2019 calendar year with one month shifted over. So that's why it's labeled 2020. It's not December. It's January 31st, 2020. So let's keep going. Uh, so that's a strong revenue growth, 6% for a company that's already doing $70 billion. To grow that to $110 billion over almost a decade is fantastic. We'd we'll love to see that here. That's the first thing we look for is top line revenue growth of any company because you can't grow. It's, it's easier to grow earnings if revenue is growing. Uh, I'll say it that way. EBITDA. So when we're hunting for e, uh, EBITDA, we're going to begin with earnings before interest and in tax or operating income. It's labeled sometimes differently, uh, but they strong growth there. Add back depreciation, which is a non-cash charge, and we get EBITDA. EBITDA is our proxy for cash flow, is our proxy for earnings. Uh, it's not pure cash, but it's a proxy. Uh, it's, it's designed to give us an idea on, on average, in any given year, what will the business throw off in terms of cash flow? And it's a fantastic way to benchmark the valuation of a business is off its EBITDA. That EBITDA has grown 10% annually. So this is excellent. We've got a top line revenue growth in companies, 6% annually, and they're growing earnings faster than revenue. So margins are expanding. expanding. Excellent. Great to see uh, here and here. Let's go look at enterprise value and see what the stock has been trading for. So we're going to pick up here with their debt load. So senior debt, that's pensions, short-term, long-term debt obligations. Uh, has grown from 12 to 38 billion dollars. No, no excess cash. Market cap 67 billion up to 244 billion. Uh, that is a quarter of a trillion dollars. That's a big market cap. Uh, enterprise value would just be adding those together, uh, and we've gone from 80 billion to 283 billion dollars. Uh, and that that expansion is both from earnings growth here. Right, that is a uh, slightly more than doubling EBITDA over the decade. But you'll notice that enterprise value is more than doubled. What's going on? 
uh, well, your market multiple is expanding. So here, the, the nice thing is the shareholders that bought this a decade ago, a decade ago, have really realized an exceptional return because uh, kind of the, the compound nature of three factors. One would be earnings growth that EBITDA has, has more than doubled. And two, the market has responded by taking the multiple from 9.7 to 15 times this number. So it's, it's, it's paying right now, in order to buy the stock, you'd pay 15 times their earnings number. Whereas before, for roughly the same cash flow, they're paying nine times. So cash flow grows, and then the investors are paying a premium for that. So that's driven the stock performance of recently. If I look average over time, uh, it's 12, 13 times is what they've traded historically. On the debt, so we look for a company, our fourth key attribute is a, 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 low, a low debt position. Here it's low. Uh, average 1.7 times uh, last fiscal year end uh, 2.1. That is low debt. Um, and, and that's a hallmark and it, it let, gives them a lot of breathing room if the economy should turn down. Uh, they don't have that much debt. Your equity is more protected and you want to see that. So let's review. Top line revenue growth, check. Earnings growth, check. Uh, solid balance sheet, check. Let's see what cash flow looks like. So we'll come up, <clears throat> we'll pick up from cash flow from operations. This is cash money that they generate from buying and se uh, selling their wares. Uh, it, is, it is not earnings uh, that can be non-cash. It is pure money that sits in the bank account cash. And that is a lot of jack. And it's doubled. Just like, just like we saw EBITDA double from 8 to 13, this has gone from 6.6 .6 to 13.7. That's good. That means they're both growing in line. Uh, EBITDA and, and, and cash flow operators, they're growing in line and they're growing at the same rate. That means the counting, the accounting of cash is smell checking with the earnings P&L. Again, if those differ, you start having people play monkey, monkeying around with the accounting work, that's a good hallmark that you should not be buying the stock. But here, cash flow is jiving with earnings, it's a good thing. Free cash flow has grown. Let's take a look at CapEx. Now CapEx, that's how much it costs them to, up, uh, to keep up their existing infrastructure as well as build new stores. And what I like to see here is that there is a lot of excess cash. This thing is throwing off a ton of cash because it, as example, last year, last fiscal year, they made $13.7 billion of cash money from operations. And all they had to do was put back into the business 2.6 billion. That left 11 and change billion dollars dollars of of cash lying around. What to do? Well, you got to pay some debt. In their instance, they issued a little bit of debt, but it's essentially zero for them. It's it's so small. So when it's said and done, what's laying on the ground is 13 billion dollars of cash that they're like, what do I do with this? It's just piling up, and every year. It's just ticking away like some sort of awesome dividend machine. Outstanding, guys. Uh, you know, kudos to the to the Home Depot operations. I certainly hope the people on the on the stock on the on the floor of Home Depot, if they have an option plan or they have a, a some 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 people have stock purchase plans for employees and they can buy it at low points in the year, which is awesome, or a discount. Buy that sucker, man. That's a great, if you can get company stock like this at a discount, keep keep tucking money away. And then what do they do with this cash, right? They dividend it out, so shareholders get a dividend, and they buy back their own stock. This is the third piece that we like to see, right? So you wanna see earnings growth. Uh, you wanna see a market multiple expansion. Now, let me back up. I'm talking about how do you get an excise return, excess return that's like really above market. It's three things. It's earnings growth, it's a market multiple expansion, and it's, it's fewer shares outstanding uh, in, the, in, the, in the future. And that's what this is showing, that, that Home Depot is taking their free cash and they're buying back shares, and they've done so at a 4% annual rate over a decade. That's, that's roughly 50%, what is that? No, it's 60% this divided by this minus one 
30%. Oh, my mental math is off. It's late tonight. It's a 30% reduction in total outstanding shares over the decade. That means if you owned a share back here, right? This year you bought a share and you held it for this nine year period of time. Your one share represents a 30% greater ownership stake in a business that itself has doubled in value. And then the market itself has raised its, its premium even higher. So if you go back and look at dividend reinvested earnings, uh, excuse me, return for Home Depot from 10 years ago, I, you're gonna have an amazing return. The question is what's it gonna do in the future, right? We're gonna figure that out. So buying back shares, strong free cash flow, the outstanding price for yield, strong yield, 7%. Uh, and that strong yield is represent represented by very strong cash flow, low CapEx, like it, it all backs out, it's nice to see. Okay, let's review. Top line revenue growth, check. Earnings growth, check. Strong balance sheet, good cash flow, excellent. Let's forecast forward and see what the pro see what the expectation is. So we're gonna pick up on uh, the cash flow going forward. Uh, I've taken the average here the last three years to kind of last three years to kind of smooth out my cash flow per share of eleven dollars and seventy one cents, and then I'm growing that at their average rate that they grew over that time period was 12%. It's been a little over the, all over the board, so I'm taking averages to smooth it out. The long and the short of it is, over that decade period of time, you need to grow, you need to grow cash flow per share 10% a year over the decade. Uh, I think they can do it. They have plenty of cash to buy back shares. They've been, they've been, they've been growing nicely. CapEx is low. That puts, and then at a 5% yield, they've got a 7% percent now i think that's a little too high it'll be bought down over time as it gets bigger so i think if five percent is is more market that's a 560 60 dollar share target in a decade let's go look at ebitda same thing here um not picking up the ebitda of previous year of 18 billion and i'm growing at an average rate which is their average of seven and a half percent and I'm growing that over time, it needs to average 5.5% over the decade, which is very reasonable. So again, they're growing EBITDA, cash flow is growing because they're buying back shares. They've got $30 billion of EBITDA by the end of the decade. Um, so the average multiple here is 12.8. I still think that's low. Uh, they're at 15.6 at the end of the fiscal. I think for a company that's growing double digit like this, that is a very reasonable price. I could see this thing trading at 18 times, um, but uh, I'm not gonna give it that credit. I'm gonna say it'll trade it, trade it 10, uh, 15. 15 times 30 is $451 billion. That's the enterprise value. Less a little debt gives me 393 billion of market cap uh, shares. So I'm assuming they continue to chunk away at their shares, buying at 4% a year, which is a strong buyback. And if they do that, they'll re reduce their shares by 60% over that decade time. Uh, and that means it's a $570 price target. Um, that's, that, that's, a strong, that's a strong number, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. Um, let's take a look at here. It's currently trading at $200 and, uh, $247. Uh, I've got a free cash flow method that we said in 2030, that's January 2030. It's five hundred and sixty dollars. I got five hundred seventy on the enterprise value. So these 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 two are very close to one another, uh, which is nice to see. Frankly, it, it, I hope I don't know if that gives more credibility to the NASA or not, but it's but it's neat that it came out that way. Uh, but it's basically doubling over the ten years from from two hundred and forty seven dollars uh, to to the five sixty five average. So we'll plug this in the economic return. Look at the IRR. So here you go, $247 is your entrance point. You get cash flow over time, which again is strong, uh, gives you an, entrance, an exit value of $565. That's a above market return of 16% on average over a decade. Uh, that's strong, uh, it, it really is. It would be even higher if you could buy it at a lower multiple than its current 15 times. If you were buying this thing back when it was at nine times, you'd tack on Gee, it's another 40% on that, uh, on that $565 uh, if, if, if you were able to buy it that cheaply, it'd be so much bigger, it'd be amazing, but you can't. Um, 
So the the, the right the the price right now uh, it means it's a 16% IRR, which is still extremely healthy for a company that's growing double digit for a company that's got very low debt. It's a solid staple of America. Uh, that's that's a solid stock right there. Three times your money over over the decade. Let's look at the distribution now. So here we are, two hundred and forty-seven dollars uh, today, roughly, uh, with your four hundred and fifty dollar price target, four hundred six, four hundred sixty-five target, gives you sixteen percent IRR. That's what we have in there, right? But if the price should fall for some reason or rise, what does it do to the ec economics? Uh, and I hope that you'll come back to this video six months from now. And you're like, oh, what did he say Home Depot was? Oh, let's go back to the video, skip to the end. Oh, here it is. Here's his distribution chart. If the stock falls to 200, it's a scream and buy. You know, I don't think it's going to, but if for some reason the economy should falter and people stop investing in their homes, Home Depot stock would come down. Um, but I think if, if, if you believe the underlying, underlying economic case is still there for Home Depot, then it'd be a buy. Uh, as it grows, you'll see the stock, the economic return come down as the stock approaches 300. Uh, you know, it's definitely no longer a buy as it, as it breaches into the, call it double, low double digit, high single digit economics. Um, but I think it's a very good buy. So I'm going to give this a, a good rating, right? Let's review our hallmarks. Top line revenue growth is strong. Earnings are strong. Cash flow is strong. Balance sheet's outstanding. And it is well priced. Uh, I wish I would have got to this earlier. Uh, but again, so much other stuff to go on. It's, it's tough to do them all at once. Uh, but still extremely attractive, especially given some of the forecasts I'm seeing out there for the S&P 500 over the next decade. People are talking single digit returns. Here's an opportunity to have some of double digit uh, with, with a solid balance sheet. So I'll give, uh, give Home Depot the old thumbs up. My name is Cameron Stewart, CFA. This is Rational Investing. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment, subscribe if you like the channel, uh, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.